It was the end of a busy day, and Duck arrived home late fuming. Ballast was all over his side tanks and frames. Evening, Duck, said Oliver. What's up? We had to take some ballast to Natford, grumbled Duck, but the silly trucks gave me nothing but grief along the way. Oliver pondered. They seem to be doing that a lot lately. I wonder what's causing it. Donald overheard and opened a sleepy eye. That would be rickety. Rickety? Aye, said Donald. He's their new leader. The young devil never behaves whenever Doggy or I take him out. Surely he's not that badly behaved, Oliver argued. Maybe he's just bored of being stuck in the yard. Och, no, replied Donald. He's worse than Scruffy. It'd keep your distance from him, Oliver. Oliver and Duck looked at each other as Donald fell asleep again. They didn't know what to think, and eventually drifted off to sleep too. The next morning, as Duck was being cleaned, Oliver was preparing to do some shunting for his first train. Mind how you go, Oliver, Duck said quietly. If you find Rickety, remember what Donald said. Don't worry, replied Oliver, or you will, and he puffed away. Soon Oliver got to work, arranging a load of trucks one by one and shunting them in front of Toad. Nearly finished, Mr. Oliver, called Toad. One more truck and we'll be away. Right, oh Toad, called Oliver, and went to find the truck. He found the truck at the end of a siding filled with ballast. That must be Rickety, Oliver thought to himself. Oi, you there, Rickety called out. Put me on your train. Why should I, replied Oliver. Well, I won't cause trouble for you, and this ballast isn't going to unload itself. Oliver sighed. He knew that ballast trucks could be trouble, but he had a train to shunt and said nothing as he cobbled up to Rickety. As he shunted him into place, the station master walked up. This lot needs to get to the harbour, he said, so make sure it's on time. Of course, replied the driver, you can count on us. Unknown to them, Rickety was whispering to the other trucks. They were going to play a trick on Oliver. Good to hear. Away, guard! And as Oliver started to puff away, there was a jolt and he slipped to a standstill. Oof, what's happening? he cried. His driver looked back. The trucks had put their brakes on. The trucks are holding us back, he said, and slowed his engine to a stop. Oliver groaned as his crew went to take their brakes off one by one. Just then, Donald arrived with some empty trucks. I told you he's a young devil, he said. Good luck trying to deal with him. Somehow said Oliver quietly. My look with this truck is not going to be good. Eventually they were on their way, trying to make up what little time they had lost. Keep in line, replied Oliver. I don't want to be late even more. But Rickety had other ideas. He told the other trucks to sing rude songs about him. Ollie's old and rather slow, so he's nearly about to blow. Shut up, growled Oliver. Soon they were approaching a hill, and the driver increased more speed, but Rickety and the trucks was making the climb difficult. Hold back, lads! Hold back! called Rickety, and Oliver began to feel the strain. Come on, come on, he puffed. Will the top ever come? Suddenly, when they reached the top, the trucks broke a coupling and started to roll down the hill. Blimey, cried the driver. Quickly, Oliver, the trucks are chasing us. Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. they giggled. We've, we've broken, broken away, we've, we've broken, broken away. Toad's guard applied the brakes, but it was useless against the trucks and continued to chase Oliver down the line. 
A signalman saw Oliver and changed the points for him to swerve into a siding. But he changed them again when the trucks thundered past. We have to stop him, cried Oliver. His driver agreed, and Oliver dashed after the runaway Toad and the trucks. Meanwhile, Toad was scared and didn't know what to do. Help, he cried, save me. Run away, called Oliver, hold on. He drew nearer to Toad until the guard called out, Oh, try and couple you up. The guard got a shunter's pole and began trying to couple Oliver to Toad. The harbour came closer and closer when... Got him! cried the guard, and Oliver's driver slammed on the brakes. They screeched along the line until they entered the harbour and came to a stop on the quayside. Well, Dud, Mr. Oliver, called Toad. You've stopped them. Oliver <laughs> smiled. Even though his wheels ached, he was pleased to have stopped a nasty accident. A few days later, Oliver and Toad had a surprise waiting for them. Well, well, Toad, chuckled Oliver. Look who's here. Rickety was stood on a piece of track with buffers at each end, as punished by the fat controller. He looked fed up. Now we won't cause any more trouble, Toad chuckled. Indeed, replied Duck, and we'll have some peace and quiet too. Isn't that right, Rickety? Rickety gritted his teeth, while Duck and Oliver could only laugh.